Hey everybody, we are under attack. It seems as though every single garden pest in northern Michigan has descended on Posen right here, right now. This week alone, we've been faced with snails and slugs, uh, aphids, earwigs, spider mites, and deer, and all of them at levels that are higher than we almost ever see. It's really crazy that they're all coming on right here at this very moment. Uh, there must have been just the right conditions for all these uh, pests to kind of arrive. So I want to tell you a little bit about how we're handling those and if you're noticing some of these problems or you should expect some of those problems. Oh, I should also mention grubs because that's another one that came into the mix. So hopefully I can remember all these as I'm telling you about them. So the first sign of the slug and snail problem came in, right along the driveway where we have the grow bags filled with hydrangeas. And in there, uh, I noticed in the area between the grass and the uh, grow bags, basically every four inches there was a snail. It was really crazy, like a little blanket. It almost looked like uh, we had added some kind of special gravel. There were so many snails in there. So clearly there was some kind of snail hatch or something like that. I did use uh, Captain Jack's slug and bug, uh, put that down. Uh, another thing that we would normally use maybe would be a sluggo. We kind of alternate between the two. And so put that down and was hoping that would take care of the problem. But I do notice that all of it has been eaten and there's still plenty of slugs and snails out there. So they are still coming in full force. Uh, they can do a lot of damage to a lot of different plants, including uh, your hydrangeas, but also there's some plants they will just eat the leaves right off. I found them on my sunflowers as well. So they're, you know, and uh, they were on some of the nine bark, they're on shrubs as well. So they go after all kinds of stuff. Uh, and sometimes they just kind of leave unsightly uh, remnants on the leaves, like on hostas, but then uh, some of the plants, they'll actually eat the whole thing. So it can be pretty messy anyway. Uh, the other thing would be, uh, related to that would be the earwigs. We notice those in the petunias and those tend to chew on them. And then a lot of times the plant looks really stressed, turns a lot maybe yellow, uh, just looks really droopy and unattractive. Uh, so those we treat with either the Captain Jack's Bug and Slug or Sluggo Plus. A uh, regular Sluggo doesn't take out the uh, earwigs. Uh, so that's another one that just, you don't see those because they do come out at night. So um, people often say like, no, no, I don't have any bugs on my petunias. Uh, well, they're, they're more nocturnal, so you might miss them. Uh, then aphids, we don't usually have a lot of problems with aphids, but we did have them on two of our rhododendron plants, uh, some of the new ones, so which that, that was kind of unexpected, uh, but we did manage, we just used a spray on those. I know there's a lot of other remedies. A lot of people say, oh, just use dish soap or something like that. But usually uh, in this kind of environment, aphids can really kind of spread pretty quickly. So you do need to spray them uh, or take care of them. And you do need to break the cycle because these are uh, ones that they have a very fast lifespan. So they will reproduce very quickly. So usually if you see adults, there's probably already eggs on the plants. And a lot of your remedies are going to kill the adults, but not the babies or not the eggs. So you probably do need to spray again, usually seven to 10 days after. So that's what we do because we really can't afford to have a really huge aphid outbreak. So we're keeping an eye on those. We do have to make sure and respray those rhododendron. It looks like it was pretty isolated, so we probably will be able to keep that one under control. Meanwhile, the spider mites are a completely different story. Spider mites are these little tiny, basically microscopic insects that um, you don't, you can't really see them with your naked eye. Although if you have a plant that you suspect has spider mites, you can shake the leaves on a piece of paper and you'll notice little black flecks and they kind of move away. Uh, so you might be able to see them. Anyway, uh, they go onto your, uh, the leaves of your plants and they will, they use this little needle and they pierce into the plant and basically suck the juice out of it. And then they move over to the next spot and they'll pierce it, suck the juice out of it. And then uh, at a certain point, your leaf just starts looking really bad. It does leave kind of a little bit of a scar on them, little stippling, little dots on it. That's usually how you can tell it. However, this was on some of the uh, younger hydrangeas that we have in greenhouse seven and hydrangea leaves are a little ripply so sometimes it's hard to really spot it also happened after we had all those big winds so at first we thought well it could be uh, a little bit of wind burn because the plant just looked really stressed uh, but we did suspect spider mites at that time so we started using our regular spray again with spider mites a lot of times they'll say well just try to spray them off with water or use a soapy water or use a horticultural spray like a uh, cleaner type thing. So it's like soapy water, but it's specially made for plants. And a lot of times that'll get it off. Well, 
These were on a lot of plants, so we knew we had to actually use a proper spray on those. So for that one, because uh, we normally, I should say, we do use a preventative spray, usually a neem oil. Uh, we rotate between like three products, two with neem oil. One is actually more of a common pesticide, kind of a low-grade one. Uh, we don't usually bring out the heavy guns unless we really have a serious outbreak. So anyway, we did do all the preventative stuff and that normally works out fine for us. We don't have any problems with them. This year, of course, is a different story. So we ended up with a ton of damage to a lot of the uh, hydrangeas. Uh, so uh, what we had to do then is basically give them another spray. So we've been spraying them now. This is, we're in week number five and the plants are just starting to recover. So the goal with the spider mites is basically to stop the infestation and then to hopefully be able to get new growth because the old growth is usually pretty damaged. It's not gonna get a lot of nutrition for the plant. And so it's really about getting that new growth. And this is the time of year for us to get new growth because then we're gonna still have a couple of months that that plant can kind of keep uh, getting energy and keep growing. And so it won't cause uh, problems for next year because if we put a stress plant through a full winter, uh, that can be really, really a problem. So anyway, spider mites, you can also a lot of times tell because they do spin webs. So usually like where the leaf meets the stem, uh, you might start seeing some webbing. And that's usually when people really kind of realize like, oh, I definitely have spider mites. Um, if you have a really big outbreak, which we did have one plant that we completely missed spraying, for the whole cycle and holy smokes, it was really weird. The whole flower head was completely covered in the web. It looked like someone had taken maybe some uh, like saran wrap and like heat shrunk it around it. It was such a thick web. And uh, fortunately, what we generally do also is cut off all the blossoms and so that we don't affect any of the pollinators and then we give it a good spray uh, and then again that's another one that you have to break the cycle so you can't just do a one and done for spraying or for whatever remedy you're using you do have to keep going because you want to make sure that you know you get those adults and that you get those eggs and that you get those nymphs or whatever little babies that they have uh, and they're going to have a lot of times in one plant you might have several insects at different life stages so you got to keep going because you know not every type of uh, treatment is going to be able to you know take care of all of those you know every single stage of that bug let's see what else did i say we had grubs a lot of people are calling us that they're having trouble with their plants like losing uh, like when branch dies, uh, usually if there's no sign of bugs, if you've been watering it properly and it's gotten enough fertilizer and there's still like one branch dying or just strange things happening with your plant, that might mean something's underground. Most common is usually grubs. So treating for those is going to be important. Again, doing it now is going to give that plant enough time to kind of recover and be able to be, get ready for winter because putting a stress plant to bed uh, over the winter, uh, stressed out, usually doesn't have great results. So uh, that's another one. What else did I say we had? Because there were plenty. Oh, the deer. Let me show you. Holy smokes. The deer. Now, normally we do use plant skids. So usually after the flowers appear on the apple trees and the different fruit trees, uh, we will spray the first uh, leaves with plant skid. And we usually don't have any problem. We need one spray. We're pretty much done. They don't usually come back. Well, that's not the case this year. These deer came in and let me just turn this around because it's just unbelievable. So those deer decided to come in and basically go after every single leaf that they felt they uh, were entitled to and nibbled them off. But more incredibly is that they were starting to break off branches. So they were completely reckless. So we have several, especially the crab apples, where this is a branch that they just completely ripped off the tree. Uh, usually the deer aren't that vigorous with it. Usually it's more like the raccoons that will kind of you know, climb up a tree and then kind of hang on it and break it off. But these deer have been unbelievable this year. So we, the crab apples got hit the worst. So these are just the white flowering crabs, the ones that are pollinators. So we won't be selling any of these uh, this year. Uh, but there were a couple other uh, apple trees that got nipped. Now, 
The crab apples could have used a little pruning, but that was pretty intense pruning and they don't need to be pruned right up to the uh, trunk. So uh, not exactly what we wanted. Now, when it comes to the other pests and the things that we sprayed for, in general, we try to avoid sprays as much as possible, but uh, we're not really equipped to be able to uh, fight these organically. We do try to do a lot of preventative uh, using neem oil. Uh, like on the fruit trees, we'll spray the neem oil in the fall and then again in the spring. Uh, so that hopefully will kind of prevent like caterpillar issues and things like that. Uh, and then we, we always hope we do, uh, but there's always a little bit that gets through. Uh, other things, again, doing more preventative. Uh, we do the best we can, but we do occasionally have to either use a pesticide or some kind of other deterrent. Uh, and that's what we do. I did respray all of the trees with plant skid again. Uh, so fortunately we just got a new shipment in it, it arrived actually yesterday. So uh, the timing was kind of uncanny that we woke up this morning with uh, so many broken branches. Uh, too bad we didn't spray sooner, but you know what? We don't normally do that extra spraying because we don't need to, but this year, everything's completely different. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, also, usually in your yard, uh, people don't always have to do a lot of preventative spraying or anything like that. Usually, uh, we encourage people to just monitor and keep an eye and then respond if they notice something because you don't want to use more sprays and pesticides than you have to. Uh, once you're familiar with what kind of bugs and things that kind of tend to be in your yard, then you may get on a regimen where you are doing more preventative, but to just spray just tons of stuff all the time just to prevent stuff, you may end up doing more harm than good, especially when it comes to pollinators. Uh, you may be discouraging a lot of other wildlife. Remember, your yard is an ecosystem and you do want to do your best to try to keep uh, all the good things in there uh, and not just try to fight it with chemicals all the time. So that's what we try to do. Uh, we're not perfect, uh, but we do the best we can with it. And it's worked so far. We haven't lost a lot of stuff, uh, but boy, it is so much work trying to keep these bugs at bay, especially when they're all coming at once. Basically our whole week has been just fighting different kinds of pests. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to give you that update and I wanted you to also start paying attention to anything that might not be going right with your plants. So take a good look and see if there's any kind of marks of insects or any kind of, uh, you know, stress on your plants. Uh, it may be that there is something bothering them, so uh, you may need to take some action on them. Uh, remember, if you are going to use any pesticides, be sure to remove any blossoms uh, because you do not want all the bees and pollinators to get all those toxins and it will likely kill them. Because remember, even if something is specifically designed to kill, say, mites, uh, mites are not the only thing that will die from it. Uh, so you do have to be careful with that. So, hey, thanks everybody. Good luck. I hope you're not having as many issues with bugs as we are because it's been a nightmare.